But, you know, personal life, holy shit. You know, it's like what they say, when it rains and pours, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Everything comes in threes, all right? I have a follow-up today on the whole car issue that's been going on this week. And the follow-up, I'm not kidding you, is incredibly creepy. It's to the point where, like, you know, it's, 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 it's October, right? It's October, so you like to hear spooky stories, you like to hear horror. You're about to hear real-life horror. That's essentially what this is about to be. Because I think a lot of people laugh with the memes at me. And they think that things are funny. They don't understand how deep it goes. They don't understand how messed up my life is because of the level of harassment that myself and my family members receive as a result of literally nothing. <sighs> That's the worst feeling. Okay. Um, literally nothing <clears throat> that I do wrong. All right. So I want to talk about it this morning because I think you guys need to know about it. It's kind of ridiculously unfair uh, how I get treated and how all this stuff happens, all right? And we're going to get into it in detail, all right? Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that what I've been telling you about in the last few days is correct and truthful because, sadly, you know, some people just like to make shit up and say, oh, Phil's lying, right? He made it all up. He made the entire thing up. His car never broke down. He's a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a scammer. I'm a liar. Uh... Now think about this. Why would I want to be late to stream two days in a row? Which costs me. When I'm late to stream, that costs me viewership. That costs me reliability. Um, and a lot of times it could cost me money to not be here on stream on the right time. You know, I lost about an hour of stream time on Monday. I lost about a half an hour of stream time yesterday. Thankfully today, you know, the saga is over and I'm able to be here on time. But... It's, every time this happens, it's bullshit and it hurts me. Why would I just make shit up, right? Monies! Now, in addition to that, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> As you guys know, in the last few days, the real reason that I've been telling you all about my car repair experience is because, number one, it's something to talk about that's fun on the podcast. It's a human experience that you can relate to. Um, <clears throat> but in addition to that, um, it's like a cautionary tale about in America, if you're going to get your car repaired, how to handle it. Because I was in a situation where I was basically trying to be, like, upsold on this repair, which is ridiculous. They were trying to double the cost of what the repair should have cost just to make a buck. And unless you're someone who has an insane amount of disposable income, which I don't, you know, that's pretty alarming. That you go to a business where you're trying to just get the essential fix so you can use your device again. Whether it be a car, whether it be a computer, whatever it could be that breaks down and you need it repaired... And you get quoted something without much technical explanation whatsoever, all right? And essentially, now, you got to decide if what they're telling you is truthful. you got to figure out what you can afford. And again, we're going to talk about it today. I have I have the receipts and everything for you, so we can talk a little about it in detail, all right? Um, I, the thing is, I can't afford it. I can't, man. So really, that's why I've been talking about it all week. If you haven't noticed, <clears throat> not once during this week have I said... Hey guys, please pay for my car repairs. Hey guys, special event. All right. Right? Special special event um where I need to raise funds to pay for my car repair. We didn't do that. All right? Like I said, I have done things like that years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pre-bankruptcy where I just had no outs. Something happened and I needed money for something immediately. And I would do special events with goals and bars that would fill up and stuff. I don't like doing that unless there's an actual emergency. This is obviously not an emergency. This is just a shitty, uh, a real shitty situation. But ladies and gentlemen, being very honest with all of you, okay, the best way that you can help me right now is to tip me. By tipping me, you are basically helping me out because I am overdrawn on my bank account. I just got the notification. It happened again basically twice this week where you guys tip me. I put money in. It pays bills and then it overdraws. And then you guys tip me. I put money in. It pays bills and it overdraws again. This sucks because I'm in a bad situation. Where, yeah, I, this is something that came up completely unexpected. Um, Didn't plan on it. Don't have budget for it because I don't have credit. You know, I declared bankruptcy two and a half years ago. I don't have anything to back up. Stuff like this. Um, <clears throat> I just got to kind of shrug and be like, it's life, right? So just because I mention it, right, doesn't mean that 
I'm looking for anything. If that were the case, I absolutely would have said, hey, we, I really need help right now, which I haven't done, okay? On my streams, I make it very, very clear, if you'd like to contribute to the stream, it's always optional. There's no uh, <clears throat> obligation to do so. My content is free. But what I do do, what I do do, it's disgusting, is tell you the best ways to support in a certain period of time. If you take a look at the leaderboard, guys, we only have $19 in tips so far today for the stream. So, for example, yes, very matter-of-factly this week, the fact that I just dropped over $1,000 on this car repair unexpectedly means that that's going to definitely put me back and I'm going to be in a big problem here for the next few weeks. It would be great if people wanted to support the streams if they could tip. Why? Because I get tips right away. I can use it for essentials. <clears throat> you know, the things that that money was going to go towards and can't now because I don't have that money anymore. You see? That's called being transparent. That's not extorting. That's not asking. That's not begging. That's just literally me being transparent with you guys. Crabcock asks, have I ever sharded my pants? Yes, absolutely. I've sharded my pants. I'm an honest dude. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that's it. That's all it is. All right. But people want to spin it how they want to. They're assholes, right? And we know that. But <clears throat> the real interesting part about all of this, this week, this whole car fiasco, is that in reality, I used it for something, which no one knows of. And I'm going to reveal it to you this morning on the Level 1 podcast. This was actually an experiment. Okay. As you guys know, <clears throat> earlier this week, I made an announcement very publicly on the internet. I said, I'm interested in doing a public interview with someone much bigger than me who has some clout and has viewership. And I want to get my side of the story out there on the internet in regards to what's going on with me and the harassment that I get and all these things that happen. Okay. Why is it that everyone out there gets to repeat these memes that are not factually true, nor have they been vetted anywhere to be factually true? They have not been proven. It's just, oh, there's a high chance. Maybe there's a coincidence. There's a conspiracy here. If this aligns with this, and if this adds up to this, and if Jupiter aligns with Saturn and Venus today, and if the whole circumference of the planet is spinning and it spins at a certain velocity and the cloud cover goes a certain way, it probably may be true. Okay. <clears throat> and what really pisses me off about all this is that people pass around that shit on the internet as fact. They don't say, oh, it's maybe true. Oh, it's possibly, it's a conspiracy about Phil that could be right, you know, if everything is truthfully, factually true, but we can't prove it, right? Hey, well, I heard this. It's got to be true. <clears throat> Instead, it's just true. Why is, why is Phil one of the most hated YouTubers? Because all this stuff about him is true. And I've seen countdowns and I've seen all kinds of fucked up stuff in regards to this being done. Even bigger YouTubers doing these countdowns and shit with me on the list. And it's all bullshit. But I haven't really been able to defend myself. Do I defend myself? Of course I do. Here on my streams. But how many people watch my streams? Right now we got 377 people on, on the Level 1 podcast. Right? I'm sure my haters will, will clip and regurgitate the stuff I say on here. And then immediately say, oh, it's all fake. It's debunk. You can't trust the word he says. Right? Even though they don't have anything factual to show either. All they have is conspiracy and stuff too that can't be trusted. But of course, I'm the one who needs to be distrusted, not the million people making up crazy shit. Okay? But that's the problem is I can only defend myself on my own content and I don't get any kind of viewership or, or, or attention on the internet. So what everyone hears is the one side, the negative side. Okay? They don't hear my side. And it gets to the point where it's not fair. Oh, that was fair. Yeah, that was real fair. Because... You know, I don't have money to sue everyone out there for slander, right? I don't have the time to do that or the means to do that. So I can't shut them up. They get popularity. They get clickbait. They get money based off of the slander that they put against me on a daily basis, right? But I can't defend myself. Now people believe, all right? People actually believe the nonsense, all right? They do. They actually think that, like, what, what is said about me on the internet is absolutely... Uh, true and it's not it's bullshit, but they believe it is fact. Okay, so my whole thing earlier this week was I want to do an interview with someone publicly All right, where I Get my story out there and even if you don't believe it All right, at least the story is out there 
okay? Now, over the course of this week, I've had so many people contact me, fans, haters, you know, YouTubers of many different sizes and statures, supposedly uh, an actual legit gaming uh, journalism company, among other things. <clears throat> there is absolutely interest in having me on someone's show to do kind of a tell-all explanation from my side of the story, what's really going on in my life, okay? Some of them want me to cover my whole history, like how this has been an ongoing thing ever since I started on YouTube over a decade ago and cover the levels of harassment that I've been on over the last decade plus, while others are more just interested in the immediate. It's more like, does someone want to do an actual like documentary expose or does someone just want to do like a one-off podcast show where they just talk to me? And there's been different takes and... I've actually got a lot of other a lot of people interested to the point where like I'm talking YouTubers with ridiculous reach and views, YouTubers with good reach and views, YouTubers with moderate reach and views, and then nobodies. Okay, I got like all these levels of people interested in interviewing me. Who knew it was a new thing? Being internet popular, internet famous as a YouTuber was a new thing. There was no way that you could predict what the fuck was gonna happen. But there's been one constant <clears throat> in all of this. All right. And I'm going to get back to that because I want to tell you the story about the car repair first. And then I'm going to tell you how I use the car repair as an experiment to see what would happen this week. And then use that to determine how I move forward with the interview. All right? Because, man, people think I'm a dummy. They really do. They think that I'm a moron. They think that, like, everything is just, I, I stumble upon every every piece of luck and every pop, every piece of happiness and popularity in my life is just dumb luck because I'm a dunce, tripping over myself, slipping on banana peels, dropping things all over the place, right? Everyone thinks that I'm just, like, the biggest, uh, you know, moron. But in reality, some things, not everything, but some things happen for a reason, all right? And in this case, I used my real-life situation all right, to my advantage, all right, to try to get to a point where I could figure some stuff out and see what would happen moving forward in regards to me being transparent with people on the internet, all right? <clears throat> As all this is happening, my car breaks down, legit, just breaks down out of nowhere the other day, Monday. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Who would have expected that? It's a car that I don't really drive. You know, I drive it once a week, all day, on our day out. So that's once a week it gets used. And then my wife goes to work usually on average three times a week. It depends on, on the shifts that she's given. As I've explained to you guys, sadly, the way that retail works in the United States, you don't get consistent hours anymore. So one week you'll work 30 to 40 hours. Great. One week you get 10 hours. What? And it fluctuates because it depends on the performance of the store, but it depends on a million different factors. And it sucks when you're trying to hold down a, you know, a job and make money, and you have no idea how much you're making in any given week because it depends on what your schedule is like. So some weeks, she's not here three, four days when I'm streaming because she's working, and other weeks, she's here almost all week because they gave her no hours, you see? So it's all over the place. So the car gets sporadic use, um, but it still gets use, right? I did buy the car um, in uh, 2017. It was uh, spring 2017, like April, May, something like that. So I've had the car for about five to five and a half years. And, you know, yes, I take it for maintenance. I get the oil changed. I do all those things, okay? Really stupid that people will say I don't, but, you know. Um, so there's nothing wrong. Never had a, uh, seriously, never had a problem with the car. Not once. Zero problems with this car, okay? Besides, well, okay, I take that back. I had a leak in one of the tires. I got it patched. No problem. Since then, nothing. You know, no big deal. Um, as I told you guys, on Monday, it wouldn't start. Now, I don't know what the problem is. The check engine light is on. The power steering light is on. I'm no car guy. I don't know what the hell's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay? So, you know, I'm in a situation where I'm just like, I, I have no clue. I don't know what's happening. Um, You know, I got to get a professional to look at it. So immediately, I got to get the car towed and brought to a local car repair place. That cost me $200 to get the car towed. Then when it's at the place, they can't look at it that first day. They wait. They, they, it sits there for 24 hours. <clears throat> they finally yesterday call me. Here's what they want to do to the car. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what they proposed and told me. And then I'm going to show you the actual invoice of what work was done and what I paid. All right. So here's what they wanted to do. 
all right? So, of course, you take it to a place, they're immediately going to charge you the moment they look at the car. So they charge you $100 just to check the computer of the car. This is literally, no exaggeration, hook up a wire, press a button, and it tells you what's wrong. $100. That's America, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Some places do it for free. This place, no. Um, so they claim that uh, the battery is either incredibly low or that's one of the issues in general. They're not 100% sure if it's a major effect, but the battery is five years old, all right? Five-year-old battery, it tends to start to wear out. I actually did speak with my father, who is a car guy. He used to uh, repair cars when he was younger. And yes, I see someone asking in the chat, yes, my parents did have the money to buy it. They were just fucking stupid. He confirmed with me, yes, this actually is a true statement. Um, <clears throat> that basically, uh, yes, uh, the battery will wear out. And if you don't replace it every five years, you're setting yourself up for problems. Okay. So I'm told I need a battery replacement. Uh, that's going to be like, you know, uh, almost $300 between the testing of the battery and the replacement of the battery. It's almost 300 bucks. Okay. <clears throat> so continuing on. I needed an oil change. This, of all the things that I brought the car in for, this one was needed because absolutely positively the car had the oil light go on about a week ago and I was trying to figure out when will I have a chance to drive it to like Jiffy Lube or something just to get the, the oil changed. Fine, it's already there. You might as well do the oil change, okay? If you go to a place like Jiffy Lube to get your oil changed, they'll charge you like maybe 30 bucks, maybe 40. Oh, uh, this place charges 70. You know, is it the same service? Likely, yes. I mean, maybe they use a slightly higher grade of oil. Um, but, you know what I mean? Damn, someone really scammed me. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. Um, now, the major problem they claimed was the problem with the car. They said that there was a malfunction in, that, that it was saying that the cylinder was misfiring. And so when they ran their test and they looked at the spark plugs, they determined that one of the spark plugs, all right, had an issue. The way the guy described it to me on the phone was that it was completely worn and fried, all right? That's what he said. Now, do I believe that? I don't know if it's fried. I don't know how the spark plug would have fried. Like, I talked to my dad about this. He's like, I don't know, for, for a spark plug to fry, likely what would have happened is water got into your whole system. He's like, so if you're, like, driving a rainstorm and somehow water waterlogged your engine and got into that system, then maybe that would happen. But it definitely doesn't sound like that, you know, that's true. He's like, you know, if they're saying the spark plug is fried, you know. But anyway, who knows, right? You don't know what to believe. But they're basically saying one of the spark plugs is shot. But of course, they want to replace all the spark plugs. Now, what the guy told me, all right, on the phone, is that they also wanted... To replace all of the ignition wiring in my car. All of it. Okay? Just replace the whole thing. All the wires and, I guess, I guess they're called ignition coils or wire. I don't know exactly how it is. I don't know what this is in the car. But they want to replace all of that. All right? So basically, when I started breaking this down with them on the phone, I'm like, so what's it going to cost? And they start telling me. They're like, so the battery's like two something, basically 300 total with the diagnostic and everything they're running. Um, the spark plugs are going to be over $500 to replace all the spark plugs, <clears throat> okay? The ignition wiring, get this, over $850 to replace the ignition wires in the car. $850, okay? So basically when, the, when he's going through all of this for me, all right, I'm thinking in my head, you know, I don't know anything about cars, but I'm trying to uh, attack it from a logic perspective, okay? As he's telling me this live on the phone. I don't have an invoice in front of me at the time. I'm just listening to what he's telling me on the phone, trying to absorb it, all right? So then finally, I said, so what would that be total? And he goes, oh, it's over 2100 blah, blah, blah. I was like, this guy's nuts. There's no fucking way that my car that I barely use, I'm paying $2,100 to repair it. There's nothing, you know what I mean? He's, he's out of his mind. Another one of these stupid... You know, days where just stuff, crazy stuff happens completely out of my control. 
So I said to him on the phone, I said, so let me ask you a question. Do you know if there's anything wrong with any of the wiring of the car? And he goes, no. I said, okay. So we don't know if there's something wrong with it, right? So walk with me here. The battery's old, probably needs replacement. Let's do that. Oil change is a no-brainer. It needs it anyway. You're saying the spark plugs are damaged. Fine, let's replace them. Replace what's broken. But what about this insanely large $850 charge that you're trying to get me to do here when you don't even know if there's anything wrong? And he starts to explain, and he's like, well, you know, <clears throat> typically when spark plugs are changed out, if we have a situation like this, you would want to replace all the components associated with the spark plugs because that way you're completely eliminating any chance that the same issue would happen again and yada, yada, yada. So the way I, I talked about it yesterday, I'll say it again. This is the equivalent of you going to the doctor, all right? And the doctor, you have a bunch of symptoms. You got a cough, your eyes are burning, you have an earache. So you explain your symptoms to the doctor. Based on the symptoms you told the doctor, they can't really diagnose the true root cause of what's going on. So the doctor says, I'm going to prescribe a wide range of medications for you to try to get everything fixed, okay? Now, the difference between going to the doctor and going to the car shop is when you go to the doctor, usually your medications are covered by insurance. So yeah, you get a bunch of medications, but you pay a few dollars each. It's not a big deal. If you're going to the car repair place and they go, oh, we want to just literally replace everything in your car associated with something that could go wrong so that we do this, this, this issue is fixed. Yeah, but what does that cost? You know, insurance doesn't cover that. So they're trying to basically rip me off and have me replace parts in my car that they have no evidence have anything wrong with them. Is there a possibility, a slim chance, that maybe there's something wrong with the ignition wiring in the car and it caused a spark plug to fry? Yes. Have they actually tested it to determine that? No. They just want to replace it to make a buck. And I hate to say it, at American car repair places, they do this all the time especially from what my father, my father knows about this. And he says, if you, especially if you go to a chain place, absolutely, this is what they're trained on doing. It's called the upsell. They spin it, all right, to say, oh, this is something you need, when in reality, it's not. They're trying to do every possible thing to make money. Hmm. So to them, replacing the ignition wiring is a very easy job that they can make a grand on. So of course, they're going to tell me I need it, when in reality, I don't, all right? So what I told him to do, I said, listen, all I want to do is replace what we know is broken and I want an oil change. So they amended the quote and everything. Now, instead of $2,100, it's $1,100. So I halved the price of the repair by telling them, don't do all this work, okay? So after I, uh, <clears throat> after I do that on the phone with them, Okay, I, I immediately call my father and I talked to my dad and he basically confirms I did exactly the right thing. He's like, yes. He's like, the, if the spark plug is looking like it's fried, you should have it replaced. But there's no evidence it's the wiring. Why would you fucking rewire the car? <laughs> it's like, what? No, you're not going to do that unless, you know, this is some, again, if you're rich and you're made of money, you have insane disposable income and you want to absolutely prevent anything from ever happening again with your car, then you do that kind of shit. He's like, but there's absolutely not nothing that you would do. Um, it's no, That's crazy, okay? So he confirms, yes, pretty much everything is fine. He says, and as long as the car, as they replace those components and your car starts, you're good, Okay. So the funny part is, they call me within an hour. Oh, your car's ready. So again, this giant amount of work they're quoting me, and then it's a, it's done in an hour. So obviously, it's not anything extravagant. It's not a lot of work they had to do. It was a quick fix. But they're trying to charge me so much money for it. It's absolutely insane. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're out of their fucking minds. So basically, I, I'm like, well, what can I do, right? So what did I do? Uh, I, between my streams, I, you know, I went back there, paid the $1,100, all right? So now I'm going to show you, because now people are going to say, oh, he made all this up. Phil likes sob stories. Phil's trying to get, <clears throat> you know, sympathy from his audience. I'm going to have the, the hard copy of the invoice right here, all right? A big stack of papers. But just to show you exactly, it reiterate what I, what I said and show that it's real. So here it, oh, that's not it. Here is the work that they performed on my car, okay, broken down in painstaking detail, all right, 
and the insanely exorbitant amount of money that they charge me for each piece. Because, yes, these are all overinflated prices because the place I took it to. All right. Um, and you can argue I got ripped off. I didn't. Yes, I got ripped off. I know I did. But you knew that you were going to get ripped off. It's a problem. I needed, The thing is, I needed this done fast. I couldn't have it go to a place where they're like, oh, uh, it has to sit here for three days because I'm so backed up. I can't get to it. No, I, I had to have my car for tomorrow for my day off. My wife works this weekend. She needs the car for the weekend. Um, you know what I mean? This is incredibly basic stuff there. Seriously, it's all incredibly basic stuff. And none of it is complex. None of it's out of ordinary maintenance. It, the price is, is ridiculously out of ordinary. Because, you know, they're basically like, oh, this is all, look at all this work we did. No, you didn't. This was like an hour of work to do all this. Okay. Um, you know, it is what it is. Right. So there, there it is. Now, just to confirm that what I'm saying is not a lie. Here's what I paid. Ready? To hide in the corner of my podcast. There it is. Over $600 in parts. What parts? Well, the battery... And the spark plugs. That's it. They charged me over $600 for a battery, car battery and spark plugs. Labor, $360 for them to plug it into the computer for it to say what the, what's wrong and to replace a battery and to replace spark plugs. $360 of labor. Okay? Shop supplies, yes, our state tax is high. I'm aware of that, but we don't have any income tax here. Um, state income tax, that is. And uh, there's your total. All right? So that's what I paid in order to get the car back yesterday. And yes, the car runs fine. Yes, everything's good. You know, they did a good job. It's not like they did a half-assed job. The car is clean. It's not like they fucked it up or anything like that. I'm, I'm not going to complain and say, oh, they did a bad job. They did a good job for what they did. For the price they charged, they better well have done a fucking good job. Right? Then I get robbed, of course. Now, they gave me another piece of paper, okay, Suggested preventative maintenance. Suggested preventative maintenance. All right? On this piece of paper, they recommend replacing all the ignition wires for $850 and replacing the carbon air filter, all that is the air filter in your, your vent system, for $50. All right? So they're suggesting I take the car back and spend, no exaggeration, another $1,003 for preventative maintenance. Now, I just want to clarify something. When I was on the phone with them yesterday morning, they did not say that replacing the ignition wires was preventative maintenance. The guy spoke on the phone as if this was something wrong with the car that needed immediate attention. He never mentioned this is to make sure that it doesn't happen again or, you know, this was, oh, you need this done, okay? The way he said it on the phone. So they do it again. They do it on purpose because they're trying to make you think this is what you need to do to get your car fixed when you're not. It's just, it's a way for them to make an insane amount of money. Okay. So just think about that. If I was ignorant, if I didn't know how America works, right? And if I didn't know that these kind of businesses try to do this to you, I would have, I seriously would have paid over $2,000 for something that right, dead to rights should have been 1000 or less, really should have been probably about 500 okay? So, that's pretty crazy, huh? Pretty nuts, all right? So, there you have it. Now, after that, I came home, I was upset, <laughs> obviously, that I just spent that much money, at least my car works now, I got a new battery, I'm good for another five years, spark plugs are good, likely this is going to happen again, I would hope, <clears throat> um... So I think we're all good, all right? That's that, all right? So this is where the story should end. It's not where the story ends, all right? Because one of the major reasons why I've been talking to you about this car situation all week is because I wanted to conduct an experiment, all right? Everyone thinks I'm a dummy, all right? But I was, I was actually setting the table to see what would happen if I talked about this and I revealed limited information about a situation that was really going on with me. Okay? So, congratulations to the people who fell for my trap and walked right into my hands. You have proven 
My point that I'm about to make, and I've said it before, but people don't believe me, but you fell for the fucking trap hook, line, and sinker. All right? Here's the deal. He's going to do this. <laughs> I gave you guys half information all week about this because basically I didn't want people to know outright what was going on. I wanted to make it so that, you know, you don't know where I went, right? You don't know all the details. I told half details, right? On purpose. Because I've been telling you guys this for years, all right? I'm stalked on the internet. Literally stalked. Any piece of information someone can get about me or my personal life that is not involved with what I'm publicly displaying for you guys, okay, is seen as like some crazy golden nugget. Like, I'm serious. Like, they think like they're, they, they went to temple and they, they got through a bunch of booby traps to get to that golden goblet, you know, like the fucking, the, what is it, the, uh, the chalice of life or, or the holy grail. They think that any little piece of menial, menial information about me that's not public knowledge is somehow a giant piece of, of like enjoyment for these stalkers. Anything they can figure out. All right. Now, if you haven't noticed in the last five years, all right, a lot has changed about me and my content. I became a full-time streamer, right? And that has been my focus. If you haven't noticed in the last five years, I've completely and utterly phased out any kind of vlogging or any kind of, of any kind of video footage into my home outside of my office, right? My wife, right? You know, I met her, we started dating, she moved in with me, and we got married. All that's happened, and you've got very limited information about anything about our personal lives besides a few snippets, and you know, I tell you, oh, we're watching The X-Files. What do we have for dinner today? But outside of that, I don't share a lot, and there's a very good reason for that. All right, because these people are so obsessive for some reason. I'm, I'm a, listen, I'm a small time guy. I don't make a lot of money on YouTube. I don't, I don't overall make a ton of money, right? I'm, I don't get a lot of views right now. You would think, oh, Phil's about to expose a, a big thing that happened this week. Uh, he, you know, this should, the podcast has 500 viewers, right? This podcast will probably have a thousand views if that on my channel after the fact. I don't get a lot of viewership. I'm not Mr. Popular. No one really cares about me except these obsessed people. Me. Too popular. Me. You're actually, you're, you're seriously asking me this question if I'm too popular on the internet. Me. Dark Side Phil. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. At all. <laughs> but, for me to disprove the things that they're saying on the internet, I have to show you factually true information. When I do that, I am now exposing myself. That is exactly what they've wanted all along. All right? This has always been their game. Let's make it so much of a pain for Phil that he will be dumb enough to actually show us something real, and now we've got him. Because now we can absolutely, positively destroy this guy. Right? So, when people say, oh, Phil, you're just paranoid. No, I'm not. Here is your factual fucking evidence that I'm not paranoid in any way. They literally just did this. Overnight, they committed identity theft. They, they impersonated me. And they tried to fuck with me and realize, oh, there's nothing here. Right? But if something that stupid, <clears throat> they went to that length. Again, can you imagine if I showed you anything personal from my life, th what they would do with it? Okay? Seriously, like, if... if one of these accounts gets compromised, that could be ruining, you know? They could they could destroy my, my I, not that I have credit because of my bankruptcy, but they could go even further. They could try to steal all my money. They could try to ruin all of my accounts. Like, I, I always tell this story and people think I made it up. It's not, it's 100% true. Years ago, I was doing a vlog in my kitchen of some sort. I couldn't even tell you what it was. It might've been a DSP tries it. I had accidentally left my invoice for my power company, my electric company, my electric bill, I had left it on the countertop of my counter when I was filming this episode of DSP Tries It, okay? Just at a glance, the camera had panned over there and showed the company, all right? My detractors called the electric company, impersonated me, and tried to get my electricity turned off. 
The only reason I knew this is because I had set up automatic email notifications for anything that happens with that account. And I got an email overnight saying, you're scheduled to have your power turned off on Monday as the earliest that we could do it for you. I was like, what? What? So of course I immediately called them. I explained the situation. And what we ended up doing is putting in multiple levels of security to prevent anyone from being able to impersonate me in the future and do anything against me like that. You know, and then I had to go and do that with many other companies and things like that. But this is what I mean. And this was years ago. This was before all the current shit that's going down with me right now. This was many years ago. So that's what I mean. Like this stuff is so ridiculous. All right. And based on what, you know, what horrible act did I commit to have my life like this? Right. Seriously. What did I do? What, what heinous crime? There's people out there who they're being exposed for running ga gambling rings with children, right? There's people out there who are blatant, outright, 100% scamming, you know? People out there who have done insanely harmful things to people all over the internet, all right? We know this. It's public documentation of this. I'm the one who gets this treatment. But what the hell did I do? Did I do immature, dumb things over a decade ago? Yes, I did. I said dumb, irresponsible things on the internet in my old content. I'm aware of that. I've apologized for it. I've watched documentaries on it, cringed at it, said, wow, I'm glad I'm not like that anymore. Since 2017, when I actively started to change as a person, okay, I've made a concerted effort to become better, you know, because I love what I do for a living. I don't want to lose that to some nonsense. So I've done my best. I've changed my life. I met a woman who has changed my life as well, a soulmate who I live with and will, will be with forever, um, who we, we have a great life together here. And we don't want to put anything like that at personal risk. You know, it'd be crazy to do so. You know? So it's just funny because people want to always say things like, again, you're paranoid or, you know, the no, the real reason is because, you know, you're guilty of everything. No. The real reason is because look at what happens with something so meaningless as a car repair. They fall right into my hands and do exactly as I thought they would. Now imagine if I actually put out something that could actually put me at major risk. Yes, if, if, a, if a financial account, if a phone account, if, I mean, there's a million things. If any of those things ever were to become at high risk, I mean, just, just to give you some perspective here. There's something called two-factor authorization for those who don't know. Here's how it works. You need to sign into a site that's very important to you, all right? So you put your name and password in. Well, you set up two-factor authorization. So now they send a special code to you via, wait, there's an email address, a cell phone number, whatever it may be. They send that to you as another level of security to make it authentic, to prove that you're who you say you are. So usually that goes through a phone or an email address, all right? The reason this is so important is because there's people who try to break into accounts all the time, especially mine, you know, all the time. This is a constant. If I didn't have two-factor authorization, all my shit would have been messed up years and years ago. Thank God I did it as soon as it was available on all these accounts. Now, can you imagine if I open up this phone, okay, and I show you stuff on the phone to prove innocence for one thing, but based off of that, they now have information they can use to get stuff off my phone. Now, anytime I go for two-factor authorization, they have that data, and now they have access to all my other accounts. Done. That's not paranoia. That's what they're doing. That's what this is. <coughs> That's what all this is. That's what they're exactly what they're trying to do. You understand? So, Phil, if you're going to do an interview, though, you better go on that interview with concrete evidence. No. You know what? You had a chance because I was considering, I being very honest with you all now, if I was going to do a tell-all interview with someone, I was thinking, gee, I should go to this person perhaps with all this information, present it to them, right? And then we pick and choose what we show, what we don't show. At this point, I'm not going to show a fucking thing. There's no point because if I do, these idiots could use it to hurt me. I'm not going to put my family at risk. Because someone's slandering me on the internet about a fucking mobile game or some dunce level bullshit that's not true. I'm not stupid, you know? This is crazy that I have to actually think about this. But I do. This is my life now. Like, everything that I did. Seriously. 
Everything I touch, everything I do, I have to think twice about it. Anyone else on the planet can say, nothing's ever at risk, I'm fine, no worries. Literally everything that I touch, I have to be worried about, is this putting me at risk? Is this exposing me? Is this going to possibly somehow be made public later and it could hurt me? That's fucked up to think about, isn't it? It's really fucked up to think about it. But that's my life now. Um, and there's nothing I can really do about it, man. I just gotta, I gotta do what's best for me and my family. So you absolutely, positively had a chance to actually have me show concrete stuff to disprove what people were gonna say on the internet. I used this week as a test. It was just a coincidence this happened. Obviously, I had no idea my car was gonna break down. But when it happened, I said, ah, aha, Eureka, here's what we can do. Let's see what happens, because maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe the nonsense has calmed down and these people have actually become intelligent and they won't do the horrible thing. They won't commit the crime to impersonate me and try to get my personal information. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not. Maybe maybe I am paranoid. <laughs> they did it faster than I anticipated. I didn't even have to show you the invoice yet, and they had already fucking done it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look what I can do online! <laughs> wow. So, yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, when these idiots say things like, "Why doesn't Phil just prove what's wrong? With that, that 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 what we say about him is wrong?" I'll tell you why. Number one, because I am innocent until proven guilty. No one has proven a damn thing. All they've done is created conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. I've seen entire giant chat lo logs from Discord servers that have, like, my name in them. That's not me. I literally never typed a fucking line on there. So they fabricate, it's like, uh, hundreds of hours of work of the shit that they've created. This nonsensical web that somehow they've spun to create their crazy theories about me that are not true. But it's just so insane that it's gotten to that level. And they think, oh, well, because Phil doesn't say, you know, doesn't disprove it. No. I'm innocent until proven guilty. You still haven't proven anything. All you've done is just kept reiterating the same conspiracies to the point where now people believe them as fact because they're stupid. If you believe a conspiracy theory with no hardcore evidence, right? You fucked up. You're an idiot. There's so many of them out there. Now, I'm not saying don't be skeptical and believe everything you're told by the authorities or whatever, right? Even me, you know, you have a right to question things that I say and do. Everyone does. You know, you shouldn't just believe absolutely 100% everything says, everyone, everything everyone says as honesty and truth. Because you know, everyone has a spin on everything. Everyone has a subjective take, right? Not everyone's an objective person. Everyone has a subjective take on everything. You know that. If you're an intelligent person, you know that. All right? But no one has proven anything. And they won't. Do you want to know why they won't? Because it's all false. Don't you think at this point, right? <laughs> there would have been something. There's nothing. It's just, they, here's another level of bullshit I created. Here's another level of bullshit that I created on top of the other bullshit. Let's just keep piling the bullshit. And it's now like a skyscraper of bullshit. But if you haven't noticed, I didn't take the bait. I have not given out information that would hurt me. Because I'm not stupid. So I sit here and I take all this shit. And I'm like, whatever. But you know what? I'm able to still operate a business. I'm still safe. I don't have all of our personal information compromised. I don't have people trying to reverse engineer all my accounts and steal them. I don't have, you know what I mean? Last, last year was scary because there was someone who had access to one of my accounts and basically tried to take a lot of money from me. All right. That's the truth of the matter. Because what they try to say about it is that there's bank leaks and shit. None of that happened. What happened was I had someone who actually tried to take money from me and Luckily for me, all right, I had alerts set up and also I didn't even have the money that they were trying to take. I guess they thought I was a liar and I, I have tons of money sitting around in my accounts and stuff. You know, I didn't have the money. It still cost me a lot of, of, of time and, and money to fix because accounts had to be completely closed. New accounts had to be opened. I had payment arrangements for various different institutions that were voided because I had no money to pay them now. So now everything, I got late fees, violation fees, new calculations had to be done. And by the end of the day, that identity theft that I had last year cost me several thousand dollars to fix. You know. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I love it. 
then these idiots say, oh, Phil, you know, it's your own fault you're in financial distress. Well, to some extent, yeah, I'm the one who got me originally in it. But every time things start to go better for me and I get to a point where it looks like things are going to get better, this kind of shit keeps happening and it sets me back again and again and again. Right? So what am I supposed to do? You know, people keep fucking with me. If they would just leave things alone, here's the thing. People say the thing they hate the most about me is that I'm a beggar on my streams. I just keep asking for my, my fans for support, okay? If you would leave me the fuck alone and not do this and not try to fuck with everything that I'm doing, if you would leave me alone, I wouldn't have to do it anymore. I'd be in a position where I don't have money draining out of every orifice because you keep fucking with all the things in my life. I, within a few years here, as I've told you, I have a plan. My hope is that eventually my credit gets better and I can do something with my credit that now I can get out of the, the, the back debts that I have. Those will be settled. I'll have enough to now keep up on all my monthly stuff every month. You know what I'm saying? Um, excuse me. This is my plan. I do have a plan. I absolutely have a plan. But I need the plan to work and I can't have it work. If at every moment, you got an idiot impersonating me over here trying to fuck with me. You got someone doing this, doing that. The things that these people claim they hate to see me do, it's the reason why they abuse me, can't go away if they keep abusing me. You see what I'm saying? They're creating this vicious cycle, this reciprocant cycle. If they would leave me alone and not fuck with all of this stuff and make me having to blow money on shit and do dumb shit, this would all be better. But they won't leave it alone. So in a reality, what it is, is they like, you know what they call it? They like to see the train wreck, right? Oh, everyone wants to see the car crash. Everyone wants to see the train wreck. So the truth is, they're, oh, the reason we do it is because Phil begs. Wrong. False. Wrong. Incorrect. The reason they do it is because they want to see me suffer. That's the truth. They're doing it because they want to see Dark Side Phil, Phil Burnell, suffer. They like seeing me squirm. They like seeing me in pain. They are fucked up sociopaths. That's why these people do these things and say the things that they do. They do it for personal gain and they get personal enjoyment out of it. They're not, there's no crusade against Dark Side Phil to say, oh, he's doing something wrong. That's why we're punishing him. They just like the punishment. They like the idea that the things they do are anonymous. They can't get in trouble for them. And then they get away with it scot-free while they get to see me be suffering here in real life. All right? That's the reason. That is the, the true diagnosis of what's happened with me on the internet over the last 10 years since This Is How You Don't Play started. At first, it became a joke about how bad Phil's gameplay is, but then it became, oh shit, we get a lot of pleasure out of seeing that guy suffer. Let's keep it up. Let's dox him. Let's swat him. Let's DDoS attack him. Let's hit him with false copyright strikes. Let's completely harass him and all of his family members up, down, left, and all around. Let's fabricate a million conspiracy theories and stories about the man until he breaks. And then one day he's going to be on stream, he's going to break down, he's going to cry, and we're going to laugh. I'm not going to break down. Like, it's been tough. You know, my life has been tough over the last decade. It has. I'm still here. I will be here for as long as I desire to be. All right? None of this is going to change because of you. You have no power over me whatsoever. Because the things you say are wrong. They're false. If they were true, something at some point would have been proven and happened. Nothing has. It's the same bullshit you say about me every day. Because you have nothing. You made it all up. Like I said, maybe a nugget of truth. You're never going to get me to stop doing what I love and do meaningful content for the audience that I have a great relationship with. This is too, means too much to me. It means too much to people all over the world. Even as small time as I am now compared to how I used to be, and you think, oh, look at the success we've had running him off the internet. I'm still here and I'm never going away unless I choose to do it. Maybe you can get someone else off the internet if you try, if you're really resilient. But DSP, Dark Side Phil, is not going anywhere because of you. This... This shit doesn't scare me. This shit is exactly what I expected. You fell for the trap. You proved my point. And now I know that if I do a tell-all interview, I just can't show anything concrete because of that. That now is my actual justification for saying there's too much risk involved because of what these people have done to me. Congratulations. You screwed yourself. Fuck this shit. Oh, no, you didn't, you motherfucking piece of shit cocksucker.
Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. I'm going to find out who the fuck you are. You motherfucker. <laughs>